After many years of marriage, love requires more effort. An emotional therapist talks about a feelingless marriage in middle age. In addition to marriage, emotional therapists suggest that in the lives of middle-aged couples, we should focus on the opportunities that middle age brings to life and maintain emotional health with C, curiosity, compassion, and self-control. The bumpy middle age, although full of pain and confusion, also allows us to re-recognize ourselves, expand our horizons, grow, and truly grow up. Research has found that the most important factors in creating a satisfying relationship are all related to emotion. How to perceive emotions, experience emotions, manage emotions, communicate emotions, resolve emotions to the point where you can respond to others, and reconcile emotions with behaviors and goals. The ability to maintain emotional health is summarized here as curiosity, compassion, and self-control. Only with curiosity can we open our hearts and understand the true feelings of ourselves and others. With compassion, we can feel the pain of ourselves and others. With self-control, we can control ourselves and communicate our reactions to others in a precise, sensitive and more acceptable way. The golden triangle composed of curiosity, compassion, and self-control can guide people towards a concept of self-activity, no longer regarding their own feelings as the responsibility of their partners, and help us build the psychological abilities needed to make correct judgments in the bumpy middle. Age, finding ways to live happily in marriage depends not only on whether we can use our emotions skillfully, flexibly, and flexibly, but also on other abilities, especially whether we have a way to distinguish between the personal needs of our partners and the needs of the marriage itself. The breakdown of relationships in middle age often occurs when one side is ignored. Sometimes, people think that marriage must suppress the individual, so they endure it until it no longer works. Or someone may find that they can only maintain their own needs with a zero-sum survival strategy, unable to see marriage as a resource that provides comfort and stimulation, stability and growth. Throughout our lives, we constantly learn about ourselves by comparing ourselves to the personalities of others. Ideally, instead of purely reacting, we use our interactions with others to increase our awareness, thereby deeply defining ourselves and forming authentic connections with others. Swinging back and forth between one's own feelings and those of others like this is the driving force for personal growth and also the driving force for growth in marriage. As long as the emotional interaction is healthy, you will get to know yourself as an individual and your relationship with each other will deepen as a partner. But marriage itself can easily lead to misunderstandings about who is responsible for whose emotions. Not to mention other romantic notions surrounding marriage. It can almost be said that our initial joyful vision of a passionate union between two people eventually transformed like a mud monster into the generation-to-generation -generation dilemma of who should do what for whom, if no one stands up to face it communicates and resolves challenges in an emotionally healthy way. Over time, they will eventually fall into the trap of thinking that personal needs and partner needs are destined to be incompatible, and then believe that daily confrontation is an unshakable reality and there is no way out. Escape. One thing we miss in both cases is that the way we deal with our emotions has a profound impact on the way we envision and engage in marriage. Marriage will bring challenges one after another, whether it is solved by oneself or by two people. It requires the greatest efforts to solve it. All kinds of emotional changes in marriage are almost always related to three major challenges, children, sex, and work. Therapists suggest taking this opportunity to think about three questions. First, what kind of person do I want to be? Second, what kind of partner do I want to be? Third, how do these two fit together? Broadly speaking, if you can properly control the troublesome surging energy in middle age, it can make a lot of contributions to personal growth in the following aspects. 1. Become a more loving person. The meaning of this sentence is not to retreat into innocent love and secretly indulge in the yoga teacher who has a crush on you, but to devote yourself to it and gradually become more tolerant and compassionate towards others and yourself. See your partner's perspective and realize that their thoughts are just as important as your own. It also means acknowledging the narcissistic tendencies that everyone has. See others as real people with feelings, not as objects to fulfill your needs or your psychological projections. This requires a lifetime of hard work and never give up. 
2. Express your emotions skillfully instead of just losing your temper. Marriage is a ready-made garbage dump. We are used to throwing our negative emotions into it, and we just complain and accuse. Take responsibility for expressing yourself and proactively repair relationships after negative interactions to pave the way for intimacy. Keep your distance from your fantasies. This means that you must develop self-awareness. Realize that actions and thoughts are two different things, and use imagination and fantasy as a source of creativity rather than as a way to numb yourself or as a way to escape. 3. Explore your needs in life and find ways to overcome mood swings. In adulthood, a sense of mission and meaning stem from to psychological activities, deepening inward and expanding outward. In middle age, we need to use the lost youth and the whisper of death as fuel to awaken and strengthen self-awareness, love for others, and interaction with the world. Emotional therapists advise, if your marriage no longer counts as a safe, loving relationship, you shouldn't stay in it. Meanwhile, another suggestion is that staying in a marriage may be difficult, but it may be the most effective way to develop a safe, loving relationship. Everyone has the right to decide whether marrying a partner is the ideal way to pursue an intimate life, but we may also make this decision under unexplained pressure e.g., feeling forced, rushed, and without the freedom to choose. In many counseling cases, pursuing a safe and caring relationship and resolving marital problems is more practical than divorce, and the results are more satisfying. After talking about so many personal responsibilities in marriage, there are two generally recognized concepts. First, it is believed that adults, especially after having children, have the responsibility to accept their fate. So, what should you do if you are unhappy? Divert your attention. The second is the belief that marriage requires work. However, based on this stance, some people classify this identity as a strict abstinence camp, which is like a desire killer. From sex to eating, work ethics must be promoted. First of all, I want to clarify that the first point is to believe that those things that are lacking in middle age are all good things worth yearning for and worth striving for. The feeling of being a live, the flexibility of change, the desire to feel, love and be loved. Enjoying intimacy shouldn't give up these things. But in addition to marriage, if we focus on the life opportunities brought by middle age, we should also think about these goals from a broader perspective. Middle age gives us the opportunity to re-examine ourselves and take responsibility for ourselves. Midlife is a time not only for us to explore ways to live happily with our partners, but also for us to measure our relationship with ourselves and with the world. The second point is the concept that marriage requires work. When you ask married elders about their life experiences, you will occasionally hear that their proudest achievement is marriage. They say this because marriages are rarely easy. Who knows? Maybe some people really think of marriage as a creative project. But there is a general rejection of the comparison between marriage and work. Not only because the metaphor reinforces the impression that marriage stifles spontaneity and passionate fun, but also because it unfortunately captures the reality of marriage as we experience it today. The hopes and hopes that lead to it in the first place. The fun is now completely different from the actual situation, but this interpretation completely misjudges the core of the whole thing. The so-called kung fu does not include the drudgery of washing the toilet or the monotonous and repetitive nerve-numbing work on the production line. The so-called kung fu is to face the problem, true emotions, and helplessness. Kung fu is the practice of opening your heart, paying attention to the present moment, listening to your feelings, and having difficult conversations. Kung fu is the practice of creating intimacy, having the courage to take risks, and speaking honestly. At the same time, also listen to the other person's honesty. Once we are unwilling to take risks, we close ourselves off and alienate others, making it difficult to feel anything but boredom and stagnation in a marriage. We start telling ourselves, it shouldn't take this much trouble. I suggest that if the thought of working on your relationship discourages you, think of it as working on yourself instead. Really, the less you work on yourself, the more effort it will take for others to get along with you. Have you ever noticed that some people rejuvenate themselves and then leave their misery to others? As long as you are willing to take the time to explore your heart and connect with what is in your heart. Wrestling with the devil, what you get in return must be a more perfect relationship. This stage of middle age gives us the opportunity to become a more complete person. 
Fighting the difficulties that rise in middle age is a process of self-understanding. It requires every ounce of perseverance and perseverance. You need to balance the intense reality you are experiencing and keep a certain distance from reality. However, when you finally reach the goal, you will be more aware of yourself. I have a considerable understanding of life, and I am able to sympathize with myself without being selfish and feel satisfied without being deceitful. Many people get stuck feeling that their situation is both incomprehensible and bearably banal. As we enter a midlife marriage, we grapple with many powerful forces and become more aware of them. This helps us to be more empathetic and less blaming toward ourselves and others, while using patience and wisdom to identify individual path of. We are not trying to reconcile some fatally flawed marriages here, some of which should have ended. Instead, we are concerned with the distressing psychological states of midlife and how they teach us to stay active, creative, and committed throughout the rest of our lives. Although the bumpy middle age is full of pain and confusion, it also brings opportunities for us to understand ourselves, expand our horizons, grow, and truly grow up. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.